Is your life being wrecked by the super rich? The super rich, who are they and what are they doing to us? What are they doing to us? Whatever it is, people say that just the fact that the rich have so much is itself immoral. Immoral and wrong that the top one-tenth of one percent in this country own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Is that a moral outcome in and no, of itself? No, it's not. Um, it's not. And They want to condemn the people that actually have moved civilization forward. Yaron Brook of the Ayn Rand Institute's annoyed that today's democratic socialists say rich people got rich by taking money from others. In fact, they actually improved the standard of living for everybody on the planet. How is that possible? How could it improve everyone's living standard? Isn't there a fixed amount of money in the world so when rich people grab a lot, there's less for everyone else? No, because wealth can be created. We have basically made about $2 a day for 100,000 years. In other words, we could eat what we, what we farmed, and that was it. And then something amazing happened about 250 years ago. A few countries tried capitalism. For the first time, people were allowed to profit from private property. That changed everything. Division of labor let people produce more with less, and then they traded to get even more. Wealth increased with every innovation. Cargo transported by ship used to be stored in barrels, in sacks, in wooden crates, and offloaded by hand. Economist Don Boudreau points out that enormous wealth was even created by the invention of the shipping container. With it came a wave of specialized technology that dramatically increased the productivity of shipping. Workers today are superhuman compared to their brethren of yesteryear. We went from carrying bags on our backs to lifting the equivalent of two school buses with mere flicks of our wrists. Most of this innovation began just 250 years ago. 250 years ago, we suddenly discovered the value of individual freedom. We suddenly discovered the value of leaving individuals free to think, to innovate, to produce without asking for permission, without getting the state to sign off on it. And we call that the Industrial Revolution. Industrialists, the people who owned the factories, employed hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. And they made enormous profits and how does that benefit your fellow man? And ever since, politicians have complained about those profits. In Ayn Rand's novel, Atlas Shrugged, state officials demand that industrialists explain how they're getting rich helped others. I do not owe you an answer, but I could tell you in a hundred ways. Thousands of jobs, billions in revenue, fueling our economy despite your efforts. Hank Reardon was right. Capitalism created new wealth we got much, much, much richer. And it's hard to imagine how much richer we got. Of electricity, of running water, the things we all take for granted today, but we didn't have 150 years ago. And yes, some people complain about inequality, but everybody got richer. Even the poor got richer. In the past several hundred years, we've gone from a society where people hoped to get jobs that required long hours of hard manual labor to one where almost everyone has what they need to live and more people have leisure time to do things like watch movies. You're a wizard, Harry. I mentioned Harry Potter because Brooke bought lots of Harry Potter books, but he says he's not poorer for it. J.K. Rollins became a billionaire and I got poorer by thousands of dollars. And yet, nobody really thinks of themselves as poorer for having read Harry Potter. It made my kids happy. How much is that worth? So I'm actually better off for having spent those many dollars on those books. Under capitalism, that applies to every transaction because capitalism, unlike socialism, is voluntary. Like a pretzel. We see this every time we buy something. The seller's there for his own self-interest, and so am I. So why do we both say thank, thank you? Thank you, thank you. Because he wanted the dollar more than he wanted the pretzel. I wanted the pretzel more than the dollar. The transaction doesn't happen unless both of us think we win. And that way, voluntary transactions create wealth. Thank you. Thank you. Since the Industrial Revolution, we have more than doubled our life expectancy. We have dramatically increased the quality of our life. And we are wealthier than anybody could have imagined. Made possible by private property and capitalism, which people hate. People don't like it. Because 
you know, it takes real responsibility over your own life to, to achieve something. And unfortunately, our educational system has taught us that since we don't sacrifice enough, because we're, we're basically too self-interested to sacrifice enough, the state must now intervene and force us to sacrifice for our fellow man. And that belief that sacrificing for others is more moral is what gives socialism strength. It's not so tough to share your stuff. Every priest, every philosopher, every mother has taught us that to be selfless is good. Selfless is good. No mother actually means that, right? She, no mother actually wants you to be last in line. They all want you to be first in line. But they tell you that because they think that's what nobility is. But the people who do for others are not more moral because they're wasting the one life that they have. Lots of us see morality as helping other people. If your house burned down, neighbors in America have always helped their neighbors. What? Nice I and thought you people. objectivists didn't approve of that. Ayn Rand was never against charity. What she said was that that was not the major virtue in life and that you should voluntarily have a choice about who you help and who you don't. The key is that somebody else's need is not a moral claim against your life. Your life is yours. Today, socialists say self-absorbed Americans won't help the poor and the sick. That's why government must force everyone to give. Otherwise, the weak and the poor will suffer and die. But indeed, the weak and the poor under capitalism has done better than in any other system. It's a fantastic system that is fundamentally moral because it allows individuals to pursue their own happiness. Your pursuit of your own well-being, which is a virtue in and of itself, also helps the world be a better world.